In this video, we'll talk about small signal modeling of the MOSFET, specifically the T model and the body effect. So we'll start a discussion with the simplest small signal model we have for the MOSFET, and that's the very simple pi model in the top left here. We're neglecting channel length modulation and other effects for now, just to help us uh, arrive at a T model the simplest way possible. So the first thing to note is that whenever you've got a current source, whether it's an independent current source or a dependent current source, such as the one on the MOSFET small signal model, regardless of the current flowing here, I, the analysis of the circuit is totally unaffected if we replace that single current source with two current, current sources in series having the same current value, of course. So clearly, as far as the rest of the circuit knows, there's no difference between these two boxes. Now, the reason we might want to do this is that if we, we make, making this equivalence, making this replacement creates a fictitious node here between the two current sources, which we can label node X. And since these are ideal current sources, their current they conduct is independent of the voltage across them. So really the voltage at node X can be absolutely anything. It has no effect on the rest of the circuit outside of that dash box. For example, we can pretend that the voltage here, let's call it VX, again, which doesn't necessarily really exist, but this fictitious voltage between the two current sources can be bouncing around all over the place. It really doesn't matter as far as the rest of the circuit goes because those are ideal current sources. So that's what we've done here going from left to right. We've simply split the dependent current source GMVGS into two series current sources, both with the same value GMVGS, creating the node X in between. And remember that the voltage at node X could be absolutely anything. It really has no effect on the circuit. So having done that, this is where um, people sometimes get confused or surprised, but we can, without affecting anything outside the blue box, short node X to the gate terminal, as we've done here. Now, the reason this looks a little strange or surprising is that we know that the gate current into a MOSFET has to be zero. Um, and yet now it seems that we've created a conducting path in through the gate into the sort of channel between drain and source. Remember, first of all, to take a step back and recall that the small signal model is simply a schematic representation of the linear relationships between small signal quantities running around in a circuit, voltages and currents. So there's nothing, there's no physical interpretation here. There's not really any short between the gate and the channel region, of course. Moreover, if we write in a simple nodal equation at node X, we will see that this current is precisely equal to this current. They're both equal to GMVGS. Therefore, a nodal equation here will reveal that the current coming in this way has to be zero, always regardless of what else is going on in this linear circuit analysis. So we've sort of preserved this basic truth, which is that gate current has to be zero. That's not being affected by creating this uh, connection. All we're doing is saying, look, the voltage at node X could be whatever we want anyway. So we can just pretend that the voltage uh, happens to be VGS. Uh, between the source and this fictitious node X. Um, there, there's, no, there's no problem with that. We're not affecting any of the analysis. So this is a direct equivalence here. We can make this substitution as well without um, changing anything. And finally, all we do is rearrange this model a little bit and we arrive at the T model shown here on the far right. So, you know, this final change that we made is simply recognizing that, look, the current in this branch 
over here is GMVGS, which is proportional to the voltage across it. That's just like a resistor. A resistor also draws a current proportional to the voltage across it. If we choose the value of that resistor to be 1 over GM, then it means that the current flowing down here is going to be the voltage across the resistor, VGS, divided by the value of the resistance, which is 1 over GM, so times GM, which is what we knew already. The current coming down to the channel region is GM times VGS. Moreover, it's still precisely equal to the drain current GM VGS up here. So the gate current remains zero, just again, writing a nodal equation at this node X that reveals that. So this is another perfect equivalence. So we've, uh, through this process, gone from a pi model all the way to a T model and shown that they're precisely equivalent to each other. So either one can be used. It's just that one may be uh, more convenient than the other, depending on the type of problem you're solving. But either can be used, and if you do the analysis properly, you should get the same result in either case. The very simple T model we arrived at neglects channel length modulation that is we are assuming that the transistor parameter lambda is zero over here on the left. We can include the effect of channel length modulation by introducing a small signal resistance RO between drain and source, just as we did in the PI model. And that's what the connection looks like in the T model. The value of RO in this T model is the exact same as that in the PI model. Specifically, RO is VA over the DC operating point drain current uppercase ID. And you may recall that VA is related to lambda. So we can also write RO in terms of channel like modulation parameter lambda. Here's a simple example to illustrate the impact of channel length modulation on a small signal analysis. You may recall that a transistor connected in this way with gate shorted to drain is referred to as diode connected. In this case, it's an NMOS transistor. With the drain connected to the gate, we can be assured that the transistor won't be in triode uh, if the gate voltage, the gate source voltage exceeds the threshold voltage, it'll turn on and it'll surely go into saturation because VGD is zero because they're shorted together. So if we're interested in the small signal equivalent resistance between these two terminals, um, we'd have to find the DC current flowing here, depending on what's connected between these two terminals, we would do a DC analysis uh, and find the operating point ID. And then we linearize the circuit and replace the transistor Q with its small signal model. And that would look like this. We're here using a T model, neglecting channel length modulation at first. Okay. And um, so you can see that whatever voltage appears between these two terminals, whatever small signal voltage appears here, appears across the gate source. So that's lowercase vgs. 
the resulting current coming out here, coming out the source, the small signal current is certainly given by Ohm's law VGS over 1 over GM, or simply GM VGS. This is also evident by recognizing the current here is the sum of GM times VGS from the dependent current source and zero current, which we know is flowing into the gate terminal of this uh, MOSFET. So really this whole two terminal device here is indistinguishable from a single resistor with a value of one over GM. And that's the small signal equivalent of a diode connected NMOS transistor that has at DC a VGS exceeding its threshold voltage and neglecting channel like modulation. So next, let's, let's take a look at what this looks like if we include the effect of channel like modulation. So here we've redrawn the small signal equivalent Again, assuming that the transistor is on with VGS exceeding the threshold voltage. But this time, we've used the T model, including the effect of channel like modulation. So the precise value of RO, just like the precise value of GM, depends on the DC current flowing over here. and transistor parameters, lambda specifically. And if we repeat the analysis, we can um, recognize that this part, this blue part of the small signal circuit is simply a small signal resistance with a value of one over GM. And that is appearing in parallel with RO. So the total resistance seen looking into these two terminals of the diode connected transistor is now no longer simply one over GM, but if we include the effect of channel length modulation, it's one over GM in parallel with RO. So there's an example of how a small signal analysis can be impacted by incorporating channel length modulation. Um, in this particular case, you know, it's quite likely that depending on the MOSFET parameters, but for typical MOSFET parameters, RO is likely to be much larger than 1 over GM. So um, we may be able to neglect RO in the analysis, but for more accuracy, uh, there it is. So second, we'd like to talk a little about the body effect in MOSFETs and its effect on the small signal model. So you may recall that MOSFET is a fourth terminal device. The fourth often neglected terminal is the body terminal. And if you look at a cross section of the MOSFET shown here on the right, you'll recognize that the body terminal is really um, has a field effect on the channel region, very similar to the gate. And that's why the body is sometimes referred to as a back gate. The difference is that rather than a thin silicon dioxide layer separating the gate from the channel region, we've got an insulating depletion region in the silicon acting as the insulator between the body and the channel. So we tend to model the impact of the body on the channel region by having a term in the threshold voltage that depends on the voltage drop between source and body. So as long as the voltage between source and body is zero. That is, if the body and source, for example, are shorted together, or they're both connected to ground, then this term becomes zero. The entire term in square brackets also becomes zero. And the threshold voltage of the transistor is equal to its nominal value, which uh, for which we use the symbol V subscript T zero. On the other hand, if the source body voltage is not zero, then the threshold voltage changes. And changes in the threshold voltage appear in the square law equation very much like changes in uh, VGS. They appear inside the quadratic term. And so that's because you know, the body is indeed acting as a back gate.
So it shouldn't be surprising that when it comes to small signal modeling the body effect, it results in a term very similar to that of uh, you know that that due to VGS. VGS modulates the drain current via the small signal transconductance GM. And likewise, VBS, the body source voltage, modulates the drain current via a body effect transconductance, GMB. GMB can be found just like GM by taking the partial derivative of the drain current with respect to the body source voltage. And we would evaluate that at the operating point, whatever it is, the DC values of VGS and VDS, uh, at which this particular transistor is biased. Now, since VBS appears in this expression for the threshold voltage, and that threshold voltage in turn appears in the square law, just like VGS, then there's some terms in common that, you know, between GMB and GM. Both, for example, are proportional to Kn prime and W over L. Uh, so the relationship between GMB and GM you know, the two terms are related by this parameter, which is in turn defined as the derivative of the threshold voltage with respect to the source body voltage. So in any case, it's a parameter that depends on body effect constants, it's gamma and phi subscript F, and also depends on the bias point BSB, uh, the nominal body source voltage. Rather than go through all the derivations, I'd rather you know, draw to your attention this intuition that GMB shows up as a transconductance just like GM, but that it is smaller than GM by this factor. And typical values for this factor are in the range of 0 0.1 to 0 0.3, again, depending on the transistor parameters and its operating point. And so that shouldn't be surprising after all, the whole point of the MOSFET is we've engineered the gate to have a very strong field effect coupling to the channel region. And that's why we use the gate to modulate the drain current. Uh, so it's, it's natural that it has a stronger field effect and therefore has a stronger modulation coefficient, if you like GM, than the back gate, the body region. Otherwise we'd be using the body to modulate the drain current. And there are indeed transistors that are made to do so. They're called uh, JFETs. So in cases where the body is shorted to the source, or even in fact, when the body is separated from the source by a fixed potential, in either of these cases, the small there is no small signal component to the body source voltage. It's not varying at all. So the small signal term here, VBS is zero, which means that the current flowing into this dependent source is also zero, which means it can be replaced by an open circuit. And we're left with the Pi model, the regular MOS small signal model that we had before. So this tells us that we really only need to take into account the body effect and small signal modeling when the body source voltage has a small signal superimposed on it when it's time varying.